Hey there, Christian Walsh, Wire Associates, and I want to thank you for joining this live stream. I'm excited to be here. This is only my second live stream that I've done. The first one, we talked about uh, the Austin, Texas real estate market, but this one's very different. So this is going to be the LA County and LA City eviction moratorium. You guys, I asked you if you wanted me to do this and you said yes. So this is your fault. <laughs> I'm here because you asked for it. No, and I'm, I'm honored that you want me to be here. So be patient. It's only my second live stream. We are still getting all the kinks worked out with live streams. At some point in time, we'll be experts. But uh, I encourage you to submit your questions. I have Michelle. Uh, she's my operations director. She is helping out with... Uh, hey there, Ramin. I see you joining on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah, we're streaming this on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and maybe somewhere else. I don't even know. Michelle's in charge of that. So Michelle, Michelle's my operations director. She's going to be helping with the comments as well. Uh, we just ask that you keep it clean. We're going to do our best to cover as many questions as we can. We're obviously not going to get to everything. So uh, anything we miss, we'll come back for additional live streams. And of course, you can always put your questions on my videos uh, or in the community tab as well. So what I wanted to do first is I wanted to take a quick run through, show you a few quick things, and that also gives some time for questions to come in. Uh, so one of the important things I wanted to do is show you the best resources out there for information. And the best resources we have right now are the two websites that uh, LA City has and LA County has. So LA City's eviction moratorium is over uh, and it is no longer in place as we've discussed, but their website for those who are in LA City, they have updated it so that you can see what's going on in LA County because LA City falls in LA County. So they've updated it. There's a few important things in here that I recommend if you're in LA City that you check out. They actually do a great job of explaining what to do for LA County if you can't pay your rent. And one of these important things is in LA County right now, if you can't pay your rent, Due to COVID, you have to be at 80% area median income or lower. And they have a nice handy chart here that breaks it down because it's based on the number of folks that live in uh, that unit. So you can see the numbers there. And then another important thing where they talk about is when, and this is a question I get a lot, is when you can be evicted for past rent. So I'm going to dive into that. Uh, I've got another slide for that I'll show you. But again, just wanted to let you know that the LA City website is a great resource. And then, of course, LA County's website's a great resource, including the oh-so-important for tenants who can't pay rent due to COVID, you're going to need to come to LA County's website, and you're going to download the self-certification form. They have an English and Spanish version. So that's where that is. That must be submitted to the landlord within seven days. This runs through the end of March. So now that we're in the middle of February, there's really un only one more month left of protection, and that's the month of March. And so March, you'll owe, if you can't pay rent due to COVID and, and you meet the other requirements, uh, you'll use that self-certification form. So let's dive in to... Okay, so this is another thing I had created and gone through in another video where I was talking about LA City versus LA County and some of the deadlines. I revised it, not major changes, but this is also where I talk about back rent. So LA City, again, no longer under eviction moratorium. Eviction for non-payment of rent can start now if it's not related to COVID. So you can evict in LA City for non-payment of rent if it's not COVID related and all at fault reasons you can evict as well. Uh, also owner move-in can theoretically happen now in LA City. They actually weren't able to do that under their ordinance there. Uh, it looks like Ellis Act will go into place in April unless LA County puts something else in. And then there's one distinction between LA City and LA County for unauthorized pets or people. In LA City, they can't be evicted until uh, 2024. So that's February 1st, 2024. And there's a 30-day notice to cure. 
Another distinction, paying back rent is a very common question. And some of you may have this question. According to LA City's website, rent owed from March 1st to September of 2020 to September 30th, tenants must pay by August 1st, 2023. Then rent owed from October 2021 to January 2023, that must be paid by February 1st, 2024. What it doesn't address is the rent that would be due for February and March because you fall under LA County and you're protected. And I'll show you that in a second. So LA County eviction moratorium still in place goes through the end of March, unless it's extended. Uh, the difference there for unauthorized pet or person that can start April 1st, 2023. And again, a 30 day notice to cure, uh, back rent, uh, evictions can start for back rent theoretically for, on April 1st, 2023. And there's a 30 day notice there, but if it is back rent that is, was due, that wasn't paid due to COVID, you can see down here, the residents actually have 12 months to repay any past rent due. So that's what will happen in LA city and LA County for rent that's due February and March tenants have a year to pay that back. All right. So let's see here. First questions we're going to dive into, and then we're going to take some of your other questions. First questions, these were ones that were in the community tab, and I wanted to discuss these first because they submitted them first. So we'll dive into these. So this one, in the city of LA, Van Nuys in March, are we able to proceed with three-day notice to pay or quit? Thank you for your time. Well, you're welcome for my time. I appreciate you uh, watching and, and submitting these questions. So the, the short answer is yes. If the non-payment of rent is not due to COVID, then absolutely you can move forward with the three-day notice. If the tenant reaches out within seven days of Mar in the first seven days of March and turns in the form stating that they're at 80% area median income or lower, and it's due to COVID, then no, you couldn't give a three-day notice to pay or quit. So that's a good question, and it's an important distinction. At-fault evictions are moving forward and have been, and non-payment of rent that's not COVID-related is an at-fault reason, and a landlord can move forward with eviction, even under the eviction moratoria. All right, so moving on, next question from Carol. Thanks for the support, Carol. You're great. Uh, Carol says, as a renter, does it behoove you to go to court with a landlord? And this is a great question. It appears to me, even if you win in court, you ultimately end up with an unlawful detainer public record on your credit report, which will greatly affect your chances of someone else renting to you. So that's even if you win, theoretically, it's going to be on your file. And depending on what the landlord does to check for an eviction history, it may show up. The hot tip for this, for tenants that are in these situations, is you can ask that the court seal the records. So if the records are sealed, then it won't show up on, on your public record. It won't show up anywhere if a landlord is searching for the record of the unlawful detainer. So that is the answer for that one. All right, so let's start moving into some questions. All right, wow, you guys are keeping me busy. I appreciate this. Let me... All right, let's see. Where do we start first? These are nice long ones. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the test. All right, so Abraham, tenant has other authorized occupants and has created a nuisance, causing the police to go on multiple occasions. Can the homeowner evict uh, for at-fault non-payment of rent? Um, yeah, so those are, again, don't forget what I always tell you. I can't give tax or legal advice. What I'm here to do is I'm here to go through your questions, give you my non-legal opinion, and then give you the questions that you're going to turn and ask an attorney who's an expert in these areas. So, so don't forget that. Okay. So you actually have a few different layers in this, Abraham. So you can evict for non-payment of rent as long as it's not related to COVID. So if you never received any paperwork that it's related to COVID, theoretically, you can evict for that. Now, unauthorized occupants and a nuisance, maybe not. That's actually more protected in this case. The nuisance 
because the police had to go out there, maybe you could evict for that reason. But your strongest case, if it's non-payment of rent and it's not COVID related, that's where you would talk to your attorney and you'd issue the three-day notice for that. Okay. <laughs> I see some funny ones here. This, I love this, David. That's very true. Don't go Google up a form like Liam. Thank you for that, David. So Liam's my son, uh, my younger son. And that's advice I gave in past videos is don't Google up forms. And I think that's great advice. And that's something to share here as well. Don't just try and Google 60 day notices, three day notices. Uh, go don't Google up leases. I find so many errors in leases. I'm going to release content on that. Where you can find the right form, for example, is from the LA County website. That's where you can find the self certification form. That's a legitimate place to find a form. But please don't just Google up forms. Uh, and you can reach out to me if you need help with forms, and I'll give you advice where to turn as well. All right, so let's see. All right, now let's pull up another one from Catherine. Okay, how can you establish tenant is violating below median if the tenant is still not required to show proof? Uh, five adults in home, three working, one claim COVID. So that's a great question, Catherine, and that's that's the loophole in, in the eviction moratorium. And that is actually... Uh, this conundrum where you're in is one of the reasons that there was that injunction that was filed. It was vague. If a landlord tried to prove that a tenant uh, wasn't affected by COVID and they lost, they'd owe a fee. Uh, they could potentially owe fees. So you're 100 percent right. It is a catch 22 in this case. So you, the self certification form now recommends that tenants submit paperwork to show that they. Uh, are at 80% area median income and that COVID has affected their income. So that's my recommendation is I would ask for it as a landlord. And if they don't give it to you, then don't harass them. Don't ask a thousand times, but talk to your attorney about it because you, what you may be able to do is you may be able to take them to court and and compel them to prove it. The judge may ask them to prove it. So that is the best way, I think, to handle that one right there. Uh, but definitely talk to an attorney before you move forward. Okay, let's see. Lots of questions here, guys. Um, one second, let's see. All right. Let's see. For owners move in eviction, does the landlord have to live in the property for a minimum of three years? Alec, this is a great question. And this actually opens up some other stuff I need to talk about. So that is under the current LA County owner move in provision. Yes. The owner who moves in has to stay there for a minimum of three years. Now, when that ends, that is not necessarily the case. A, an owner can do owner before COVID, before we had the emergency eviction protections put in place, if it was a single family home or a condo that, or particularly a condo that was non RSO, then they could, the owner could move in and didn't necessarily have to stay for three years. It was under state law at that point in time. And actually you didn't even have to give a reason. You didn't need an owner move in excuse. But under, so if you decide to take advantage of owner move-in for a house or a condo up to a triplex anywhere in LA County, which includes LA City right now, you are going to have to follow the current rules, which means you're going to owe relocation assistance. You're going to have to be similarly situated, which is another big deal. That means if there's a senior living there, you have to be a senior in order to move in. And you're going to have to live there for three years. So the advice I would give you, my non-legal advice, my opinion, wait and see what happens after the emergency eviction orders expire and see what happens then. So April 1st, assuming that LA County doesn't extend or put in some permanent renter protections that change your rights, you would not have to live there a minimum of three years. Um, if you were to move forward with owner move in and it's a house or a condo. So hopefully that clarifies things. I know it's a little complicated. Um, the, 
the other thing to remember is LA City has just put in permanent renter protections related to owner move-in. And that is a, um, I did a video on that. So that's an important one you're going to need to follow if you're going to be taking advantage of owner move-in. It literally affects every property now, every rental property in LA City an owner who's moving in is going to have to pay relocation assistance. So that's an important one to know. Okay. Let's see. Lots of questions. This is great. You guys, this means a lot to me. Um, okay. Here's an interesting one. Giorgio wants to know, will the city pay the tenant balance if the tenant runs away owing like $20,000? That's a great question, Giorgio. And it brings up the bigger point that there's a lot of landlords that have not been made whole. They're still, they never got the money from housing is key, whether they were disqualified or their tenant didn't apply or uh, something went wrong and it was rejected for, in some cases, for no reason, couldn't get a solid answer. So there's a lot of landlords that are still owed money. There are still some funds left over. Uh, I know that LA City is going to be rolling out a, a program for mom and pop landlords that don't have a mortgage, they can apply, which is not going to help all those who do. But there's additional funds that potentially are coming as well. There's still some COVID funds, as far as I know, that need to be spent. So there is a chance that a landlord will be able to apply. Now, the second part of this question is like, they ran away. What if they won't fill anything out? That I can't answer for sure. I don't know what the programs are going to require that you have if the tenant's going to have to cooperate. So that's the hard part on that. Of course, you can go after the tenant in small claims court and attempt to collect that money as well. But if you don't know where they are, that's going to be tough. Um, all right, let's see. Okay, so here's, here's an Ellis Act question. And I am not an Ellis Act expert yet. I'll get there. <laughs> no, just kidding. So I'm not an Ellis Act expert, but how much time will a qualified tenant have to move out after invoking Ellis Act in a rent controlled RSO unit in LA City? So this actually, there's two things I'm not an expert on. I'm not an expert on the Ellis Act yet. And I'm RSO, I have, I, any of the, I'm basically only focused right now on the emergency eviction moratorium protections. I haven't done anything with the previous RSO protections, and I'm convinced that there may be some changes to those RSO protections. So from what I understand, and again, this is where you talk to your attorney, it's going to be, if it's a qualified tenant, so it's a senior, they're going to have a year to notice, a year to move out from the unit under RSO, under the Ellis Act. So that one, I'm pretty sure. But again, it could change. So just be aware, and you won't be able to invoke the Ellis Act uh, for another couple months. We have to wait for the LA County eviction moratorium to end. So that gives some more time for the county to make changes. So hopefully that helps, Dave. Talk to an attorney about that. Um, okay. Is this Abraham? Abraham, you got a lot of good questions, but can a landlord get in trouble if a non-owner offers cash for keys? Okay. That's, you need the owner's permission to offer cash for keys. You can't just show up and offer cash for keys to a tenant and try and get them out. And I'm going to assume at the very least that what Abraham is referring to is a uh, maybe he's purchasing a property from a seller and there's a tenant in there and he'd like to get the tenant out. So he's, he's willing as the buyer or the buyer's agent or on the buy side, he's willing to offer cash for keys to that tenant, get permission from the owner, get permission in writing. And so what would my advice be to the owner? I would say, and no offense, Abraham, I'm sure you can do a good job at this, but I'd say tread lightly because the problem you run into is you can really poison the well with the tenant. If the negotiations don't go well, that buyer, I, and here, let me flip this around. This is the devil's advocate in me and the philosophy major I am. I'm always this, thinking of <laughs> multiple angles. So I could see a case where a buyer intentionally wants to make the deal more difficult, goes in and, and uh, attempts to negotiate cash for keys in bad faith, and ultimately 
makes it much more difficult for the seller. So again, that's an extreme example. Just make sure that the buyer and, buyer and seller are on the same page. The seller is the landlord. They're the ones who have to deal with the situation if the cash for keys doesn't work. So that's my advice on that. Boy, I dove in on that. Ah, this is a great one. I love this, your digital media guy. That's awesome. And Carlos, that's you, isn't it? I'm so glad you asked this, but this is not an LA eviction moratorium question. I guess on the surface, it's not. So can I use chat GPT for legal advice? The answer is no. Number one, chat GPT, which is the artificial intelligence program that's from OpenAI, it only goes back to, or it only goes up to 2021. So it doesn't have in there any of the stuff that's related to the LA city and LA County eviction moratorium. So that's one of your problems. It doesn't know about them because it stops at 2021. The other thing is I've found in playing with it and I'll release a video. It's lousy at legal advice. So don't use chat GPT for legal advice. Um, and don't even use me. This is non-legal advice. Talk to an attorney. Hopefully these discussions we're having are helping you figure out the questions you need to ask. All right, let's keep going. Um, okay. Okay. So I've got a question here. I'm not going to pop it up because it has the person's full name. And I just in for the reason that I, I want to protect their identity, um, I, I'm not going to pop it up. Uh, this person says, I'm below the 80% median in a mom and pop single family. The owner sent a letter of intent to sell uh, to, for a developer. A developer is going to demolish it and essentially take it off the market. Okay. Uh, so to this person who asked this question, if it's in LA city or LA County, that letter, that notice cannot go out right now. It doesn't matter that you're at 80% of e median income. You can't go out. You cannot take a property off the market right now. Unfortunately, a lot of landlords uh, did it and got away with it, whether they knew about it or didn't. But that's Right now, if you receive in LA County, anywhere in LA County, you receive a notice to terminate tenancy based on removing the property from the market or the Ellis Act, it's invalid. So talk to an attorney about that. Okay. All right. All night, Hyder. Uh, question, would something like a loss of job be a possible way to get around the three-year seasoning rule from above? So the three-year seasoning rule we're referencing is related to owner move-in if you attempt to use owner move-in under the current LA County eviction moratorium. So it's a good question. My advice on this would be, yeah, life happens. Uh, just as uh, an extreme example, again, another example, like you do a 1031 exchange, which defers capital gains, but you're forced to move into the property because life has changed and you have to go fight against the IRS that's a bigger fight than fighting against LA city and LA County. So document everything and show that there's a reason that you have had to move out of the property or sell it. This three year rule, really what they're trying to do is to pre prevent people from giving this notice and then never moving into the property. What's unfortunate about all these rules is the people who follow these rules aren't the problem. It's the people who don't follow the rules that these rules are trying to catch. They're the problem. They're the ones that would take advantage. So yeah, I think you can get around that three-year rule if it's if you need to, just document everything. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, here's a good one, Ryan. I like this question. How confident are you that the eviction moratorium will end on March 31st? We won't know until the very end. We haven't known until the very end on any eviction moratorium piece of legislation. And some of them have ended and come back and then ended again, like the CDC eviction moratorium. That was a fun one. So I am pretty confident, to be honest, based on what I've seen with the Board of Supervisors, that it will end on March 31st. But that doesn't mean that eviction protections are going to end. What I see happening is what happened in LA City. LA City let their eviction moratorium end on January 31st for two reasons. One is they knew they would fall into LA County, so there'd still be protections. And two, they put in place their permanent renter protections. So what I see happening is before March 31st, 
LA Board of Supervisors is going to vote on more permanent renter protections. The other thing I heard is that they're going to, the LA County Board of Supervisors may attempt to use the current emergency related to homelessness to extend some of these protections because the COVID-19 eviction or COVID-19 emergency is ending uh, both at a uh, statewide level and then it's even going to end federally. That emergency is ending. So they'll need a new emergency to keep emergency eviction protections in place. So anyway, long answer to a short question. We won't know until the very end. And of course, I'll do some updates on that. All right. Let's see. All right. Let's see here. Brittany, how you doing? Landlord is not accepting my rent because I did not move in July when they decided to terminate my lease. So that that's a complicated one, Brittany. And I think you and I have chatted before and I appreciate you reaching out. It would be interesting. You'd have to refresh my memory on why they, um, why they were trying to terminate your tenancy in July. If it was LA County and you didn't pay rent in April, May, and June, you weren't protected by the LA County eviction moratorium. It was temporarily invalid. So that could have been it. Maybe they were trying to evict you for that, but a lot of landlords did that wrong. So it'd be interesting to see why they're trying to terminate your tenancy. As far to, as, far as not accepting your rent, um, they feel for whatever reason or have been given advice that you're not, you don't have a valid tenancy and don't have a right to be there. So answer any unlawful detainer paperwork you get, make sure you answer that immediately. And then you can get in front of the judge and the judge will help, help sort that out. Um, you can't be evicted for non-payment of rent if the landlord won't accept your rent. That's an important point. And I think some landlords don't know that. They think, oh, I'm just not going to uh, pretend like I don't. I'm just going to pretend like I didn't get it. Well, no, you can't evict for that reason. Um, let's see. Okay, here's another good question. Will LA City have any more renters assistance to pay back missed rent? Yeah, so there's 5 million that's going to be devoted to, it's going to go to landlords who don't have mortgages and they'll give each one up to 30,000. And that is actually, it's not just going to the landlords, that's to relieve back rent for tenants. So if a tenant owes 50, 60,000, the landlord's going to have to accept that 30 and say they won't go after the rest. So there's those funds. Um, there's some other funds that were going, uh, I can't remember now, there were funds going somewhere else, but I doubt those would be helpful uh, based on past experience with how they've handled funds. <laughs> no offense, LA City and LA County. Um, and then there are more funds that should be coming uh, from, I, I heard up to 400 million, but uh I'm, I'm sorry, 40, there's more funds coming. <laughs> That's the short answer. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, okay, Brittany has a question. Can you go over uh, harassment? Yeah, harassment's a big deal. And it's it, there's actually several anti-harassment uh, rules or regulations written in uh, to some ordinances in LA. Uh, Santa Ana has one as well in Orange County. Um, harassment, it's the kind of thing where there can be a fine line, but if a landlord is every day giving a notice of entry or three times a week or four times a week, like that could be borderline harassment. If a landlord shuts off your utilities, that's harassment, tries to change the locks, that's harassment. There's a concept in, uh, in rentals that, that a tenant is, has, a right to quiet enjoyment. So I guess that, that's the legal term, quiet enjoyment. So if a landlord is, is basically disturbing you, so you no longer have quiet enjoyment, that's technically harassment. Another form of harassment would be calling um, immigration because you want to try to scare your tenants. That is another form of harassment as well. Excuse me, a little bit of sugar-free ginger ale to keep me going. All right, let's keep going. Um, let's see. Lots of great questions. I appreciate this, you guys. Okay. 
Okay. Here's another good one. This is, okay, no rent control condo in LA City. If the county moratorium ends, do we just give them a month's worth of relocation fee for them to leave to sell the condo? I don't want to be a landlord in LA anymore. That sums up perfectly, Ara. This is the unfortunate side effect with the uh, eviction moratoria and with these renter protections. What this will do in LA is this will force landlords out, particularly mom and pop landlords. So tenants, what you need to let legislators understand as well, because this is important to you, as we reduce the number of units that are available, rents will go up. And of course, you can try to cap rents, but it's going to lead to more competition for units as we see more people leaving. To answer Ara's question, so LA City, you can watch in my LA City video where I talk about the renter protections. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to wait until April. You're going to have to give a 60-day notice if they've been there for longer than a year. You're going to have to pay one month's relocation assistance. This only applies, the one month's relocation assistance only applies if you are a landlord who owns, and it's confusing the way they say it, four units plus one unit in LA City. So if you own six units in LA City and you're attempting to sell one, this one month won't apply. You'll have to follow the other rules that I lay out in the uh, LA city renter protections that are in place. So you'll owe more relocation assistance. And there's other hoops you have to jump through. You have to make sure that you turn the forms in uh, to the city. There's a lot of hoops you have to jump through. What I will let you know is this is one of the things that we're going to be specializing in is helping landlords follow the rules so that their tenants move out so that they can sell the property or in this case here, the other important point is you can't get them out just because you want it empty to sell. You would need to get the tenant out for the for an owner to move in. And there's two ways you could do it. You could theoretically, Ara, you could move into the property and then sell it. There isn't a time requirement as of right now. Or the other way to do it would be to do it so that the buyer of the property is going to move in. And then you jump through those hoops, you get it set up so the buyer can move in. So we're going to be specializing in that. And I know some tenants are going to be disappointed to hear that we're doing that. But what we're trying to do is we're also trying to make sure that landlords are following the letter of the law to make sure that your rights are taken care of as well. So that's a great question, Ara. And it's uh, it's complicated. And the interesting thing too about the LA city renter protections is they cover houses, they cover condos, they cover everything. Where under state law, uh, houses and condos and owner-occupied duplexes are exempt from relocation assistance and from having to give a reason to terminate tenancy. So, all right. All right. I'm, I'm just going to take this one because I, I like the compliment. Thank you. I play with choice. I do try to stay balanced for tenants and landlords, and I appreciate this. This means a lot to me. Um, thanks for the kind words. The A lot of people seem to think it's it, landlords and tenants are us versus them. It doesn't need to be that way. And really, at the end of the day, the people coming to my channel are good tenants that are being mistreated by bad landlords and vice versa. Good landlords may be being mistreated by bad tenants or good landlords that are just looking for the right way to do it. And good tenants just making sure their rights are, aren't being violated. So the people that, that are the bad apples, landlords and bad apple tenants, unfortunately don't come here. They don't care. <laughs> they don't want the right answers. So uh, this is a good question. This isn't specific. Isaac, you have some great questions, my friend. Uh, this isn't specific to LA City or LA County. Uh, you as a landlord do not necessarily have to accept partial payments for rent. Where you would, and I would recommend it, is if the law requires it. So there was a time under the statewide eviction moratoria laws where you had to accept 25% of monthly missed rent. That would have been an example where you would have uh, had to accept that. The other thing is, the other reason to accept partial rent potentially would have been if it was the, the rental assistance program. Housing is key. 
um, just showing in good faith that you were taking as much of that as you could that you were legally owed, I would have recommended doing that. But talk to an attorney before um, accepting partial rent because that's a big deal. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh boy. My favorite one, Abraham. Good questions. Does a landlord asking for access to show the house for sale violate quiet enjoyment for a non-paying tenant? Short answer is no, but the longer answer is you need to give proper notice. Uh, the first the best way to do it is to give proper written notice to show the ten, to show the property to prospective buyers uh, to do any repairs. You really should, as a landlord, give proper legal notice in order to do that. If you, it could border uh, line be harassment and start to be a violation of quiet enjoyment. If if it's obvious you're doing it to make them miserable. So if you're marching like 50, 75 buyers through. Uh, every day, then there could be a case potentially that you are violating quiet enjoyment. And then just to plug the way we do it. So when we list and sell tenant occupied properties, we actually don't like to just show it to random buyers because a lot of these people are tire kickers anyway, no offense buyers. So what we do is we like to control it and we will have a day and maybe have like an hour or two or an open house. Yes, state law, there was a court case that established that a tenant must allow an open house for a rental property. But we, we compact it all together and have as many people come through at that time as we can so as not to disrupt the tenant's life, make it a little easier for the tenant as well. And in doing it, Doing it that way, there's definitely no way that somebody could say that we're uh, violating quiet enjoyment. Okay. All right. Let's see. How long have we been going at this? A little while now. 37 minutes. Oh, my gosh. I appreciate you guys sticking around. Okay. Looks like we might be coming to the end. Okay. Oh, here's another great question from Alec. Okay. What if you have a tenant who has a history of other properties getting being evicted? Does that help your case? Alec, that is a great question. So number one, my question would be is, why would you rent to that person? Did they, you should have a screening process. That would be a reason to deny somebody from moving in to your unit. If they have been evicted in the past, you shouldn't let them move in. But I get it. That's they could potentially lie on an application. That does happen. Or maybe you call a previous landlord, and the landlord wants to get rid of them, maybe evicting them, so doesn't tell you that they're evicting them. So it could possibly help your case if you found out once they've moved in that they lied on an application, um, or a previous landlord lied. You'd have to, you wouldn't probably be able to evict them. For that reason, it doesn't necessarily, that's not one of the listed at fault reasons that you lied on an application. So you'd have to you'd have to be evicting for something else and then you could present that as additional evidence. What I will say, it's kind of a long story, but I have knowledge of this because I was involved with the trial. There was a trial where a tenant did have previous evictions. The attorney who was, evic who was attempting to evict her again for non-payment of rent, knew this because he had been the one who had evicted her in the past. Those cases, like we talked about before, were sealed. So technically, the tenant did not have to divulge the fact that they had been evicted before because it was sealed. So that was one of the things the judge wasn't quite sure when the tenant said, no, I hadn't been evicted on their application, were they lying or telling the truth because their case had been sealed? He didn't know the answer. He took a week and then finally evicted or finally uh, uh, didn't evict the tenant. Basically, I think it was sealed again and uh, she agreed to move out. So uh, long answer to a short question. Be careful. Some of these are short questions, but I give you long answers. So it potentially help. Talk to your attorney about it. Your attorney may have even evicted the person before. It was a big coincidence, but it happened. But um, 
yeah, it could potentially help. All right. All right, let's see what else. Wow, lots of good questions. Um, let's see. Oh, here's an interesting one. Alfred, can we bring lawsuits against the county of LA? Yeah, you can. And, and there's a lot of landlord groups and other groups out there that have been attempting to bring lawsuits against every one of the eviction moratoria we've had. CDC eviction moratorium, statewide, uh, LA City, LA County. Uh, there was an injunction against the LA County eviction moratorium. So it was successful on some level, but they just changed their eviction moratorium. The judge gave them time to fix it. Um, and it didn't end because of that. So yeah, you can, there's different theories too. People talk about it's a taking and it's violating contract law. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Santa Ana right now just heard that they're, somebody's going after their uh, ordinance. They're, they have a rent control, just cause eviction ordinance. They're going after that. And it's a landlord group that's doing that. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's a tough fight, unfortunately. Um, and I guess what I would say is, don't take this the wrong way, but if you are a landlord and you know that an area where your property is in is putting in place rent control ordinances, just cause eviction ordinances, it may be worth moving somewhere else, moving your, your money somewhere else. Just going to tell you that. And if you're investing, why would you invest there? So remember what I said about what these restrictions do is they they have mom and pops that are going to want to get out of there. Well, they you're not going to want to invest your money in an area when you can invest it in one county over and not have the same restrictions. So don't take me wrong there. It's uh, I'm just trying to give you the objective opinion of somebody who has money to invest or is currently invested. They're not going to want to keep it there. So, all right. Um, that's an interesting one, Tara. Let's see that. Can a landlord counter sue you for mental damages and extra damages he found in the house uh, to get back your deposit? So again, this would be a good one for an attorney, Tara, but what I'll do is I'll tell you this. You can be sued for anything in California, so I'm not surprised <laughs> on that one. Doesn't mean you'll win. And I'm going to talk about one more important thing, affirmative defense. I wanted to make sure I talked about that. Uh, so remind me, although we're going on 42 minutes now. So yeah, you can be sued for anything. But here's the thing with your deposit. Security deposit rules specify that the landlord has 21 days to get that deposit back to you. If they miss the 21 day mark, then they can't deduct anything if they send it to you 20, day 22. So it, it, I don't know if that dovetails into this, but maybe they still have your deposit. Like theoretically, they can't deduct anything at day 22 and beyond. Um, and stuff that they found, damage they found later, like they should have found it much sooner. So yeah, that's, you can be sued for anything and it's an ugly fight. And hopefully it's in small claims court. That's where a lot of deposit uh, matters are settled. Uh, Jason, good to see you, bud. And good job on growing your channel. Uh, is there an official form to give to tenants and notify them when past rents are due? So good question. And this brings up another question or another important point, And that is talk to an attorney because depending on which months you're asking for, you may not be able to use one form. You may have to use multiple forms. If you go back to some of my older content, different forms were used at different times and had to have different language on them, depending on what months you were uh, asking for back rent. So Jason, my advice would be sit down with an attorney who knows what they're doing and figure out which months it is and then give the appropriate notice. Some cases it was a 15 day notice. Some cases it was a three day notice. Um, and then going forward, once we get beyond the LA County eviction moratorium and that ends, uh, it'll be just a normal. So somebody who misses rent April 1st, 2023 in LA County, LA city, anywhere around there, Orange County should be just a regular three day pay or quit notice for that rent going forward. No protection due to COVID, but again, it could change. So good question, Jason. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, okay. This is a good question. What advice would you give to landlords who don't follow the rules from your experience? <laughs> that is, that's, it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. That's why I created this channel. Hearing the stories from tenants where landlords are not following the rules and then hearing from landlords where tenants are doing crazy things. That's really what drives me to do this. And then where those things meet, I sell real estate and I make sure it's done right for landlords and tenants. So what, what some tenants have done, and it's not me patting myself on the back, but I know one particular tenant who sent my, a video, one of my videos to his landlord to explain, hey, this is why you couldn't give a three-day notice to pay or quit at the time. So find content. You can try to send them a video and see if they'll watch that. The other thing to do, quite honestly, and this is this to me is the perfect revenge for a landlord who won't follow the rules. So listen up <laughs> out there. This is the perfect revenge. Let's just use the example. The landlord gives you a 60-day notice to terminate tenancy that's not valid. So the first thing you're going to do, tenants, is you're going to take that notice. You're going to discuss it with an attorney to see whether that notice is valid or not. If it's not valid and it's a landlord who doesn't like to follow the rules, the way you can handle it is go ahead and stay there for 60 days. And when day 61 hits and you're hit with a three-day notice, don't do anything. Then when it goes to the unlawful detainer and you get that paperwork, that's when you respond Within five days, you, you respond to the unlawful detainer. Then you get in front of the judge and you explain to the judge that the 60-day notice wasn't valid. So by now, this has been 60 days plus another maybe 60 days, 30 to 60 days. Then the judge will go ahead and deliver that amazing news that the landlord's notice was not valid and that if the landlord wants to get you out, they're going to have to deliver a proper 60-day notice. So there's another 60 days. So that's my opinion. Uh, make sure you're right, number one, by talking to an attorney. But that's my advice is stretch it out. You can fight with an attorney or fight with your landlord rather, but you're better off letting it get in front of the judge and letting them find out they're wrong that way. Same thing goes with rent increases. A lot of landlords refuse to acknowledge or don't know that anything above a 10% increase in 12 months is a 90-day notice, not a 60-day notice, not a 30-day notice. So if they don't give you proper legal notice for your rent increase, again, that's how you handle it. You just wait, don't pay it, let them send you the unlawful detainer, let them go ahead and get in front of a judge. Then they can find out the right way. So that's my advice. I know <laughs> a lot of people won't like that, but um, I think it's a great way to handle it if they won't listen to you. So, all right. Uh, some other nice comments. Thank you. Um, all right. I think we need to wrap this up. It's been 40, 48 minutes. Okay. Um, so one of the things too, I wanted to cover, we'll see if any other questions come in, but one of the other things I wanted to answer or talk about was affirmative defense. Cause I haven't really talked about that much in my videos. So under the LA County eviction moratorium right now, a landlord can't do certain things. Like they can't give you the three day notice if you're a uh, non-payment of rents due to COVID and you've given them the paperwork. So, but even though they can't do those things, they can still attempt to, to uh, take you to court. They can still deliver unlawful detainer. And that's uh, to, to send you through an unlawful detainer action, I should say. So affirmative defense is what you will use as a tenant against the landlord. You're going to answer the unlawful detainer with why the landlord is wrong. So another one is AB 1482, Tenant Protection Act, landlords attempting to raise your rent over 10% or trying to get you out, but they never gave you the AB 1482 language. That would be an affirmative defense. You bring that up when you answer the unlawful detainer, and then you bring that up in front of the judge. So to say that landlords can't evict right now for non-payment of rent due to COVID in LA County, is technically not true. They can attempt to evict. That's where the tenant has to answer the unlawful detainer action and defend themselves. So that's what an affirmative defense is. I haven't really gone into that. Just figured I'd lay that out there as well. 
Um, <laughs> Carol, Christian needs dinner. That is true, Carol. I'm fading. I'm fading. <laughs> so, all right. I think that, I think this is where we're going to end it. I really appreciate all the support, you guys. I appreciate you being here. I it means so much. All the support on my channel. Um, keep these questions coming. I'll definitely do this again. I'm going to do more live streams. I'll get better and more comfortable and not as awkward, but I'll get more comfortable. I appreciate the support of anybody at some point in time. What I'd like to do is actually bring some of you on to ask your questions. We don't have to show your face, but we can bring you on. So if you're open to that, let us know. Uh, we have our contact us. You can reach out on that. Any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Again, remember, it's not tax or legal advice. We're trying to point you in the right direction. And then any of your real estate needs, if you're thinking of buying, if you're thinking of selling, don't forget that that's, that's how we put food on the table. So that's at the end of the day, we can help you with that as well. That's really what we're licensed for is we're real estate brokers. So I want to thank you. Um, yeah, and Michelle wants me to uh, let you know that I'll uh, answer on YouTube the questions I've missed because I know there's a lot of them. Um, so I'll try to get to all of them and try to point you in the right direction. So thank you again. You guys have been amazing. And I look forward to seeing you again live.